Fudge has a friend. His name is Daniel. He's pudgy with a lot of red hair and ears that stick out more than mine. For the first time I saw him, he was standing in front of Uncle Feather's cage, lecturing to Fudge. Minor birds are native to India and other parts of Asia. The common house miner is a bold, fearless bird, somewhat larger than a robin. Robin! Robin! Uncle Feather repeated. Shut up and listen, Fudge told Uncle Feather. Don't you want to learn about yourself? Daniel continued. The miner is a noisy, noisy, sociable bird. I'll say, I said from the doorway where I've been listening. Daniel turned round and stared at me. Who are you? he asked. Peter, Fudge's older brother, I told him. Who are you? Daniel Mannheim. I'm six. I live at 432 Vine Street. Do you want to make something of it? He delivered the last sentence in a tough guy voice so that it came out something like, you want to make something of it? Not especially, I told him, trying not to laugh. Daniel turned back to Uncle Feather. Many minor birds learn to imitate the human voice. They can talk, sing, and whistle. A common house minor is genus Acridotheres, species A. tristis. Daniel is a bird expert, Fudge said. So I see, I answered. You want to hear about the vulture? Daniel asked. Some other time, I told him. Daniel came for lunch on Saturday. Would you like peanut butter or tuna fish? Mum asked him. Uh, tuna fish, Daniel said. You want to make something of it? Uh, no, Mum said, looking surprised at Daniel's tough guy line. Tuna fish will be just fine. Uh, where's the TV? Daniel asked. I always watch TV when I'm eating. It's in the living room, Fudge uh, said. Uh, we don't have a TV in the kitchen, Daniel asked. No, Mum said. We don't. Well, I feel sorry for you, Daniel said, pushing back his chair. He stood up. I guess I'll have my lunch in the living room. Oh, we don't watch TV while we're eating, Mum said. So why don't you sit down and wait until lunch is ready? Daniel pouted. I don't have much of an appetite without the TV. Well, if you're not hungry, you don't have to eat, Mum said. TV should have nothing to do with it. I was thinking that it wouldn't hurt this kid to skip a couple of meals anyway. I watch The Muppet Show, Sesame Street and The Electric Company. Fudge said, as if anybody cared. And all the commercials. I never miss the commercials. They're my favourites. My father used to write commercials, but now he's writing a book. One time, I was in a commercial. I rode a toddle bike. No, you didn't, Daniel said. I did too. I don't believe you. Mum brought the tuna fish sandwiches and two glasses of milk to the table. And I don't eat anything with onions, Daniel said. And I don't eat lima beans or peas. And I only drink chocolate milk and cut the crust off my bread. There are no onions lima beans or peas in a tuna fish, Mum said. I knew from her voice she was about to tell Daniel exactly what he could do with his lunch if he didn't like it, but she walked back to the pantry and brought out the choco. You can put you can put in as much as you like, she said, as she cut the crust of Daniel's sandwich. There. Now you should be all set. Wasn't I in a commercial, Mummy? Fudge said. Yeah, Mum said. Fudge was in a toddle bike commercial. See, told you. Did you get paid? Daniel asked. I don't know. Fudge said. Did I get paid, Mommy? I wasn't there, Fudge, you remember? I was visiting Aunt Linda and the new baby in Boston. Oh, that's right, Fudge said. So he asked me. Did I get paid, Peter? You got all the Oreos you could eat, I said. I got Oreos, Fudge said, told Daniel. I hate Oreos, Daniel said. On the same day that Daniel was eating his tuna fish sandwich without onions, peas, lima beans or crusts, Tootsie learned to crawl. One minute she was just rocking back and forth on all fours and the next minute she was moving across the floor. Mum ran to get Dad and he raced upstairs for the camera and for the rest of the day we took home movies. Tootsie was the star. Only Daniel was unimpressed. All babies crawl, he said. After a week of crawling, Tootsie became a, an expert. She could move so fast it was hard to keep up with her. Not only that, but she learned to pull herself up to a standing position. You couldn't leave anything around anymore. Whatever she found went straight into her mouth, and she found everything. From crayons to spools of thread, from Lego to Dad's notebook, she chewed up three pages of his notes one afternoon, and it took Dad all night to try and glue them back together. Mum and Dad decided to baby-proof the house. They removed everything that Tootsie could possibly reach. Tootsie was very pleased with herself. She said, Oka, Buffa, mm. Turtle learned to crawl too. He'd move across the floor flat on his belly and Tootsie would chase him, laughing. Turtle and Tootsie were friends. 
I kept the door to my room closed at all times. I wasn't taking any chances. Dad put up a gate at the top of the stairs and then another at the bottom. You always had to be careful not to step on Tootsie. She was almost always underfoot. Put her in a playpen, Fudge wailed one day when she got to his Lego and scattered them. She needs freedom to explore, Dad explained. Well, too bad if she gets in my way, Fudge said. She'll just have to learn that I'm her big brother. And clunk, he stepped on her arm and Tootsie screamed. On the following Saturday, Jimmy Fargo came to visit. Wow, I can't believe how much the baby's grown, he said when he saw Tootsie racing across the living room floor. When you moved, she was just about the same size as my cat. Now, she's a, she's a regular baby. Butter, butter, Tootsie said pulling herself up on my legs. What's she saying? Jimmy asked. Nothing, it's just baby talk, I told him. Jimmy was even more unimpressed with Uncle Feather than with Tootsie. Wow, that's some bird. He speaks French. Say bonjour, I told Jimmy. Bonjour, birdie, Jimmy said. Bonjour, stupid, Uncle Feather answered. I laughed. Jimmy didn't. Hey, turkey brain, my name's Jimmy. Can you say that? Jimmy. Say that. Say that. No, Dumbo. It's Jimmy. Dumbo Jimmy. Dumbo Jimmy. No, just plain Jimmy. Plain Jimmy. Plain Jimmy. Oh, I give up, you turkey brain. Turkey. Turkey. Jimmy turkey. Stop it. Jimmy shouted. Stop it. Stop it. I quit. 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 Jimmy finally laughed. Some bird. Alex came over to meet Jimmy. He said, oh, so you're the great Jimmy Fargo. Who said I was great? Jimmy asked. Well, the way Peter's always talking about you. Yeah, well, the way he's always talking about you, I figured out you must be the great Alex Santo. I am, Alex said. Well, then I am the great Jimmy Fargo. After that, it was downhill all the way. It's hard to be caught in the middle between your two best friends. I think Mum knew I was having a hard time because she said, How would you boys like to go to the movies this afternoon? What's playing? Jimmy asked. Superman, Mum said. I already saw it. So did I, I said, but I wouldn't mind seeing it again. I saw it twice, Jimmy said. I never even saw it once, Alex said. Oh, it's better the second time, Jimmy said. And I bet it'll be still better the third time, Mum said. OK, Jimmy said, I'll go. He bent down to do his shoelaces. Mum said, wonderful, and the three of you can take Fudge and Daniel. I had a quick conference with Alex and Jimmy. I don't care if Fudge comes with us as long as we don't have to sit next to him, Jimmy said. Same for me, Alex said, and I don't want to sit next to the other one either. The other one is a nerd. Yes, yeah, same for me, Jimmy said. I went back to Mum. Okay, we'll take them, but we won't sit next to them. That's reasonable, Mum said. It's a deal, I told Alex and Jimmy. We walked into town. We were too early to buy tickets, so we showed Jimmy and his father's painting in the window of the gallery. I dressed up as Anita's anger for Halloween, Alex said. My costume was outstanding, if I say so myself. You don't think you're too great, do you? Jimmy said. I'm just telling the truth, Alex said. I can't believe this guy, Jimmy whispered to me. He's not usually like this, I whispered back. I never should have put the two of them together, I thought. They really couldn't stand each other, and they were making me miserable. Hey, Let's go and introduce Jimmy to Beverly, I said, trying to sound cheerful. Beverly greeted us. Well, if it isn't Alex and Peter and Fudge. I'm, I'm Daniel Mannheim, Daniel said. I'm six and I live at 432 Vine. Glad to meet you, Daniel, Beverly said. And this is Jimmy Fargo, I told Beverly. You know Fargo? Oh, Frank's son, Beverly said. That's right. I just love your father's paintings, Beverly said. They are so original. He's working on a new one. Jimmy said. It's called Salami's on Parade. Sounds fascinating, Beverly said. My father likes salami, Jimmy said. Salami and onion sandwiches are his favourite. I don't eat anything with onions, Daniel said. We know, I said. Salami and onions, Jimmy said. And my father could just live on salami and onions, Beverly laughed. I bet he doesn't too much do too much kissing. That's right, Jimmy said. My mother's the one who likes kissing. That's why she moved to Vermont. Well, Beverly said, I'd certainly like to meet your father some day. Well, maybe we can arrange that, I said, thinking that Beverly and Mr. Fargo might like to really like each other. And Jimmy must be thinking the same thing, because he said, And he doesn't eat salami and onions every day. On Sundays, he likes smoked salmon and eggs. 
I don't eat anything with onions or lima beans or peas, Daniel said, and I hate the crust on my bread and I only drink chocolate milk. You're a fussy eater, Beverly said. That's right, Daniel said. You want to make something of it? No, Beverly said. I certainly don't. We have to go now, I said. We're going to see Superman. Well, have a good time, Beverly said. I wondered if anybody ever went into the gallery besides us. I'd never seen another customer in there. Outside, a queue had formed in front of the movie theatre. As we were walking to the end of it, I spotted Joanne McFadden. She was with Sharon, who's always looking up at the ground or the sky, and Elaine, who likes to punch guys in the stomach. I guess Joanne spotted me too, because she called out, Peter, and waved me over to her. Give me your money and I'll buy your ticket, she said, and that way you won't have to stand at the end of the line. Mum had given me enough to treat Alex, Jimmy and Daniel, so I gave the money to Joanne and stood right behind her. When the wind blew, her hair hit my face, and I didn't move, even though it tickled my nose. Well, Elaine said when we had our tickets, aren't you going to introduce us to him? She nodded in Jimmy's direction. Oh, sure, Jimmy, meet Elaine and Sharon and Joanne. Jimmy looked at Sharon for a long time. Sharon looked up at the sky. I'm Daniel Mannheim, the little creep said, and I'm six. I live at 432 Vine Street. That's nice, Elaine said. And who are you? She asked Fudge. Fudge Hatcher. Oh, your little brother, Joanne asked me. Uh Uh-huh. I never knew you had such an adorable little brother. Joanna never said so many words to me at once. Fudge smiled. Adorable. That's me. And I'm Daniel Mannheim. I'm six. We know, Elaine said. You want to make something of it? Daniel asked in his best tough guy voice. Yeah, Elaine said. Put him up. And she made two fists and held them up to Daniel's nose. Daniel started to cry. Don't hit me. Please don't hit me. I'm only six. He covered his face with his hands. I'm not going to hit you, you goof, Elaine said. I only hit guys my own age. Right, Alex? And with that, she belted Alex in the gut. I'll cut it out, you... Alex shouted a lot of words at Elaine. Daniel jumped up and down, saying, He said the A-word. He said the A-word. Shut up. Elaine said to Daniel, well, I will slug you. Yeah, yeah, we all promised you wouldn't. Daniel whined. I'm only six, remember? Why don't you just all cut her out? Sharon said, looking at the ground. I went inside and stopped at the candy counter and to buy popcorn and cook cokes. Then I found seats for the kindergarten babies, got them settled, and then crossed over to the other side of the theatre, where we found an empty row of for the six of us. Alex went in first, then Jimmy, and then me, and then Joanne, Sharon, and Elaine. I wondered if Joanne had planned to sit next to me the same way I had planned to sit next to her. When the picture started, Joanne offered me some of her popcorn, and when I reached into the carton, our fingers touched. And then I offered her some of mine, so our fingers touched again. By that time, my fingers were covered with grease, but who cared? I began to relax, concentrating more on sitting next to Joanne than on the movie, but maybe that was because... I'd already seen it. And then, right when Supermarket was about to kiss Lois Lane, I felt something icy cold slither down my back and I let out a yelp. Fudge was hanging out the back of my seat with a handful of ice cubes from his coke. Hi, Peter. You little... But there was no way I could catch him. He was already racing up the aisle. Here, Joanne said, handing me a Kleenex. Could you do it? I said, I don't think I can reach all the way down my back. Joanne mopped up my neck and then my back, and when she'd finished, she put her hand close to mine, and the next thing I knew, we were holding hands. Hers was soft but cold. When the movie ended, Joanne, Sharon, and Elaine walked home in one direction, and we walked home in the other. So, what's it like to be in love? Alex asked me. What are you talking about? I asked. Oh, what are we talking about? Alex mimicked, and Jimmy said, So, when's the wedding? Oh, cut it out, will you, I said. By the time we got home, Alex and Jimmy were laughing, talking and laughing as if they'd been the best friends for about a hundred years, and I felt left out. Dad had cooked a big pot of spaghetti, and Danny was eyeing it until Mum told him how many onions had gone into the sauce. Not only that, but Mum had fixed up a bowl of peas as a side dish, and that was funny because we never had anything but with spaghetti but bread and salad.